Well, uh, it is, uh, it's great to be in a week where we have a game coming up that we've circled on a Saturday. It's, uh, there's, a, there's been a really good bounce to uh, the step of the players and the coaches both because um, they know that this is a, 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 an impactful week. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that we take care of all the little things that could uh, trip us up, specifically um, when you're re referring to uh, COVID testing, you know, we're testing three times a week this week and throughout the season. Um, and then just the girls have done a, a great job of uh, being vigilant in regard to staying safe from third parties, trying to uh, do the right things um, with social distancing and everything else, because, you know, we've got a, uh, a tough game coming up on Saturday and we need all of our, we need all of our weapons if we can. With this being the longest lead up to a first game ever coach, do you feel like your team is as prepared as they've ever been for the first game of the season? Well, I, I think they're really prepared uh, technically, tactically, uh, fitness wise. We look really good. Um, we've been fit, knock on wood. Um, the only thing that I, I worry about is we haven't had a chance to uh, to play an outside opponent. You know, we've only played ourselves. And, uh, and even in, in typical years, we would have a, uh, a group of, of male uh, practice players that we could at least kick some guys uh, as we're getting ready for the season, but we haven't had it. We haven't had that opportunity. So that's, that's the worrisome part along with the other worries that, you know, our opponent the first week is a, is a tough opponent. So we've got to, we've got to be our best in that particular game. Coach, is it the different now that, you know, for the, for a long time you were preparing for so long, not knowing what was ahead. Now that it's an actual game week and, you know, you kind of see what's on the horizon. I mean, does, does it feel different now? Well, I was, I was at dinner last night with my wife. I was talking about just how odd it was that here it is the middle of September and we haven't played a match yet. Um, that, but, it, but we're finally getting to that point um, that, you know, to see Halloween decorations in the stores and, uh, and we haven't played a game yet is, is a taking some getting used to, but, but you're right. This has been a, a much better week. Saturday night, we had our, our maroon white game and the, just the pace that the players were playing with, the excitement the players had, knowing that a game is around the corner was uh, was tremendous. What players have really stood out to you during camp? Well, you know, the usual suspects uh, have been really good for us uh, in the lead up. You know, Jimena Lopez, who is, you know, arguably the best wide player in the United States. Um, Taylor Zemer, who is, uh, you know, a, a real bona fide leader for us in the middle of the park, along with Addie McCain, you know, they're both playing just lights out at the moment. Um, it's great to have Carlina sample back from injury and she's anchoring our back line. So she's been, been awesome. Um, our goalkeeping has been, you know, really improved because uh, last year, all of our goalkeepers came into the season with zero minutes um, experience at the college level. And now all three of them have got college experience and, and a year, another year of training with me under their belt. And they've been, uh, they've really, really been, uh, you know, hugely improved from last year. But then you've got some incredible uh, freshmen who are, who are going to be on our lineup and are going to be making some big impacts. Um, Barb Oliveri, who is out of Houston, who play, has played with the Venezuelan national team, is uh, – crafty and creative she's been she's a lot of fun to watch Lainey Carroll who is a freshman out of California who is a uh, fastest player on the team is uh, I mean, and is a real joy to be around just socially as well as on on the pitch it has really impressed and has, has been lights out but um, you know it's it has been the culture on the team right now the chemistry of the team right now is uh even with all the COVID stuff and the, all the stops and starts that have happened with their academic um, year this year, it's a, it's a really, really great place to be right now. And could, we couldn't be happier, you know, getting ready for uh, finally play a game. Coach, you just went through all those players. And I think if I'm right, Thomas is going to let us, and you're going to let us talk to Reagan Smith for the first time, uh, at least since I've been in, in KAGS for two years now. So uh, what can we expect from, from Reagan and, uh, 
replacing a player like Allie Watt, does she have to not try to go do, do too much? Is that fair to say? Well, Reagan Smith is, for anyone who's playing against Reagan Smith, she's a handful. And she is uh, she causes a lot of a lot of problems and a lot of uh, issues for any of our opposing defenses. So, you know, Reagan doesn't have to be anybody but Reagan. Um, you know, you lose a you lose an All American. I mean, that's what happens when people graduate from college. They they move on. And uh, you know, so not having Ali Watt in the lineup, not having Grace Piper in the lineup, you know, those that's just part of what. I think makes college sports so cool is that every year is a new year and we have to find the way to make it, make ourselves as good as we can be using the talent that we have. And uh, Reagan is clearly a big part of, uh, of what our attack is going to be this year. You guys are a few days out from opening kick coach. Do you have your, your lineup set or are you guys still tinkering with a few spots and, and some position battles still up for grabs? Well, we really like the depth of the team. So um, whatever lineup we start with uh, won't be the lineup that finishes the first half. We'll, we'll substitute, we'll, we'll rotate people through to, to keep people fresh in, in the match. One of the things that's clearly different this year than other years is the fact that we're only playing one game a week instead of two games a week. So it, it brings on some different um, substitution patterns. It, it could bring on some issues where – you know the the first eleven, in theory, could play longer because they don't have uh, they don't have another game in forty eight in forty hours. So you know we're still tinkering with what exactly is going to be the first the first eleven. But uh, like last year, we started nineteen different players in our first eleven. So it's uh, it's it, there's always great competition, and that's what this week is going to be about. It's going to be about who can kind of plant that flag and, and claim those spots for, uh, for the opening weekend in Oxford. Coach, when you look specifically at Ole Miss, I mean, the team that you guys closed the regular season with, um, you know, last year. So uh, I, I guess what challenges did, did the, they present? Well, you've got, um, you know, their leading scorer who has taken the most shots uh, on goal in, in the league in the last couple of years, Channing Foster is uh is back she's a, a threat she scored against us last year and uh you know then the people who feed her uh stockpole coming out of the midfield um you know you've got a you've got a really really solid midfield they've got a couple big target like tall targets to get on the end of uh, set pieces and restarts and then fortis who plays in goal for them uh last year i mean she was a she was the mvp of the of the match she, I mean, she was standing on her head sometimes to make saves and uh, showed how athletic she was. So um, all of that was a, you know, we, we won two to one here at home, you know, going into Oxford is, is always a tougher place to play. It's a different, it's a slower field than what we play on at Ellis. So it makes the game that much uh, closer and tighter. So um, <laughs> there, there's a lot that worries me about Ole Miss. Aside from Ole Miss, Coach, just going through practice and fall camp, do you know what you're going to get in the first 30 minutes from your squad? Do you feel comfortable? Like, I know we're going to execute this or we're going to execute this? I think so. I, I, I mean, I know what we can do. Uh, the, the question is what I, I also know that Ole Miss knows us and that they, you know, um, you know Matt Mott and Tomo, his, his assistant, are they're well-versed in Texas A&M and how Texas A&M has played over the years. So – you know, how will they how will they react to the way that we play? Um, what will they throw us uh, throw at us to try to uh, to try to thwart us and put us on our heels? That's always what the, the first twenty minutes kind of comes about. Is okay. What we know what we were going to do. What have they What have they thrown at us that we've got to try to make a wrinkle? And again, in our sport, there's no timeouts, so it's it's a it's a player's game, and we've got to we have to have our players prepared this week to be able to adjust to anything. And oftentimes with us, it's usually we can make one substitution and that one person coming in can, can kind of roll a lot of things into different places and make things work a little bit better for us. So coach yesterday, um, the conference announced that the Florida Missouri game had been postponed with, with the, with the guidelines for COVID. Now, what, 
and and y'all testing three times a week. How exactly does that happen when, I mean, is there a drop dead date of, all right, we have this, this many players that are having to be quarantined. How, how exactly does that work? Well, the league rule is that we have to have 66% of, if we go below 66% of our uh, travel roster, which is 24. So 16 players is, is the magic number, but you've also got to have, goalkeepers so if all of our goalkeepers go out then that would that would trigger us having to, to reschedule a match and the the florida mizzou game will, will just be rescheduled when they can play it um you know the the hard thing is you know i, th I think florida had did have a, a couple positives but it's the contact tracing that take that wipes out so many more uh, that you know player a has had test positive and players B through R haven't, but because they were in the same area with her or live in the same apartment or travel in the same car, now they're in COVID jail just like she is. So um, that's the biggest challenge. That's going to be the challenge for, for both us and, uh, and football and, and cross country this year is, is the players who are looking after themselves sometimes get wiped out by uh, just being around other people who got nicked oftentimes by a third, a third party, you know, a boyfriend comes to, comes to visit somebody and he's been someplace and there's your, there's your transfer. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a funny year. It's going to, it's it, obviously anyone who hasn't figured out 2020 is a different year. Um, just keep your eyes open and you'll see it's going to be even more different. Well, and you said how proud you were of the girls, <clears throat> that they've been doing such a great job of, of, you know, protecting themselves and everything. But how, how tough is it when you can only control so much and you can't control what another team is doing? Well, as you, as your uh, bona fide control freak, I'll, uh, I'll raise my hand that that's me. Um, it's, it can be a little bit maddening knowing that, you know, anything can happen, but lightning bolts strike. And, you know, it's, it's often how you respond to, uh, to stuff like that, that is going to determine, how you are going to uh, to go forward, and you know we're we're ready to respond to whatever has whatever happens. You know, last week in the Big Twelve, we had um, the Texas Tech uh, Kansas State game had to be postponed because Texas Tech had a couple players who traced, and then also the Oklahoma Oklahoma State game got got uh, postponed for the same reason with o, with OU. So. K State and OSU were able to quickly recover and and schedule a game so that they could play last weekend. So, you know, I, I, for for Mizzou's sake, it'd be nice if they could play a game, but that would mean that someone else would have to postpone a different game. And I, I think the SEC is is ready to be flexible and and ready to, to be able to move on our feet whenever we need to. Will the girls have to wear masks during the games? No, no. So the way the way the rule goes is those of us on the sidelines will wear either masks or uh, or like a face garter like this that uh, or neck garter. It goes like this. I'll give uh, we'll give Mission a plug here that they uh, donated these to us. But um, so when when players come off the field, we've got to pull those up so that we're we're looking after the players. But while the players are moving, you know it's. It's soccer. Nobody is going to be standing still next to someone for 15 minutes. It, frankly, no one's going to be standing still. So it's a game that's in motion and we'll, everyone on the sideline will have something on. And then the girls, if they get substituted out, they'll go over and get their gator or their mask and they'll put that on. The players come in, take theirs off and, uh, and head onto the, onto the pitch.